Die. Die, humans. Die! I must keep Vodra safe. I must! Where are we? Welcome. We are inside Fodra's consciousness. Asbel? No, I am Lambda. Where is Asbel? At ease, Protos Hase. No need to rush to conclusions. He is still alive. Unfortunately, even with my ability, I was unable to absorb all of Fodra. However, it did not end in failure. I was able to capture her heart, the part of her overrun by hate. The core should now return to normal, and in time regain its composure. Considering the way things ended, it may have been Fodra's own will to protect what precious life remains here. For now, I think it's best if I try to speak with her. Who? With the heart of Fodra, her animosity continues to swirl within me. I hope to understand her hatred, to melt it away, and eventually change it into trust. Who knows how long it may take. This could last a century or two, but we have the luxury of time. That's so long. Does that mean that you will be alone all that time? I no longer consider myself alone in this world. Not with a friend who can live forever. Me? Watch over me as time goes by, Protos Hase. Please, watch over my progress. I will start dreaming, together with Fodra. In that dream, I hope that eventually we may form a kind of common understanding. Just as this man did for me. When we finally wake up, I think I would like to accompany her on a long journey and see the world. Now the time has come. I shall return Asbel to you.
Sophie. Lambda. He said he was going to dream with Fodra. Yeah. That's what I heard. Asbel, are you okay? Yeah, I think so. Why are you crying? From this point on, I must fight alone, all by myself, against the humans that would destroy us. You don't have to fight anymore. Everyone here understands just how you feel. Please believe me, your dream will live on. It will be treasured and passed down among their children. Come with me and we can watch over them, you and I together. Together? I think I'm out of time now. Will you take what's left of me with you? Please take my feelings and my hopes for this world. Let it know how I felt. Little Queen. <sighs> so again let's come back to see it together again everyone let's go home to Aphinia Gal, are you sure you want to be dropped off here? Heck yeah! I want some time to take a look around the city. You're going to investigate and see how the new Valkanis system is working, is that correct? Uh-huh, you got it! It would be totally irresponsible not to follow up. I know we take it for granted, but Pascal is really amazing. Mm-hmm. That's right, and don't you forget it! Keep those compliments coming. Ahem. <clears throat> Aren't you forgetting something, little sister? Huh? Fourier, you came to see me! See you? Yeah, right. I could smell you from a mile away. How many days has it been since your last bath? <laughs> I kind of forgot. No, I give up. I refuse to look after you anymore. Anyone want to take a stray cat off my hands? Hey, let me go! Sorry, but I am more of a dog person, actually. Meow. Hmm. <laughs> 
better scrub her down, just like you would a stray cat. Ugh. Meow. Go easy on me, okay? Meow. <sighs> uh, uh, uh. <sighs> you don't need my help to take a bath. Jeez, little bro, you're scarier than Fourier. Stop calling me that. My name is Hubert. Can't you remember that? Hmm, okay. <laughs> hey, I know. I'll call you Hugh. Hugh? Uh... Okay, guys, I gotta run. See you later, Hugh! <sighs> this is goodbye for me, too. Thank you for everything, Captain Malik. You too, Pascal. Goodbye, everyone. Until then. It takes a lot of energy to tame a stray cat. So hang in there. <clears throat> See you around. Don't forget to swing by Launt. Mom would love to see you. Don't worry. Besides, I'm sure I'll be back for your wedding. What? what? <laughs> Don't tell me that. You still haven't talked to the poor girl. Like you're one to talk. At least I tried to talk to her. She just didn't really get what I said. Then it's no different. Those two are so much alike. In the strangest of ways. How are they alike? Don't worry. You'll understand someday. Sharia. Uh, yes? Your relief work has been invaluable to us. However, I wouldn't want you to lose sight of your own happiness. It would be most tragic if an angel of joy, such as yourself, decided to abandon her own contentment. And besides, your happiness is Sophie and Asbel's happiness as well. Thank you, Richard. I just wouldn't feel right if I moved on and left you behind. I don't know. You kind of sound like a sore loser. Tell her how you feel. If you don't want to end up being a total loser, Well, all right then. I think that's my cue to leave. Bye-bye, Hubert. Thank goodness you're safe, my lord. I apologize for making you worry.
this latest excursion reminded me all the more of how precious peace is. I want to build a future for Windor, for Athenia, and for Fodra. There is more than enough prosperity to go around now. But I still have much to learn before I make that dream a reality. When peace is restored, I'd like to see more of the world. Asbel, Sophie, when that time comes, will you accompany me on that journey? Of course. Sure. You know it. Whenever you're ready, we can all meet once again at Lawn Hill. Okay. <clears throat> all right, I must be off. Thank you for everything. Well, I suppose I should get back to my relief work. Oh, yeah, right. Good luck out there. Well, bye. Asbel, what about your promise? Sharia. I know I'm always really bad with words, but please, if it's okay with you, I want you to come live with me. I know you have a lot of things to do, so I won't ask you to come back immediately. I'll be the one waiting for you to come back home this time. Sophie and I will wait for as long as it takes. All right. Asbel. Sharia, last night, I had the strangest dream. I was playing with a child that looked a lot like both of you. And after a while, I finally figured out who he was. He was you and Asbel's great-great-grandson. Tell me, Sophie, would you be happy if that dream came true? Will it come true? <laughs> well, it just might. I would be so happy if that really came true. That's good. Sophie, Asbel, when I come home, I'm gonna make you all of your favorite foods, but only if you promise to eat everything up. Deal?
Ah, there we go then. So we are finally actually properly done with Tales of Grace's F. And I, I really do like the story between Hubert and Pascal. It's like, Sherry and Asbel? Nah. Nah. It's like, ah, it's nice, I suppose. But it, it, to me, it's, it's all about Hubert and Pascal. Because they just, they just seem so right for each other. It's like, I, I do wish we had more, but where it's left is like in a nice spot. Because it's still clearly obvious that Pascal likes him. She just doesn't realize to the same extent that Hubert does. It's just, it's there. It's just, it's going to take a while for her to actually realize. And like Malik says, it's like it's going to take a while to train it. How did he put it? Train a straight cat? Something like that. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, it's like, it, it'll take a while, but it'll get there. It'll get there. It's like she, she knows it in her heart of hearts. That's why when she was building the Mecha Asbel, it broke because she was distracted. Something came to her mind. This genius... This person who can actually just accomplish anything was distracted by something important, which is Hubert right here, clearly sending a message off to her. It's like, ah, uh, you'll get there, Hubert, you'll get there, you'll get there. It's like one of, my, one of my favorite ships. I have three ships, at least in this ship, I suppose. I'd. There is one good thing, is I, is I, neither of them are voiced by my girlfriend. It's like, yeah, my other ships are um, Sayaka and Kyoko from Madoka, and Uni and Nepgear. Yeah, and each one, Sarah voices one of the characters, so it's like, it's nice to actually have it, so it's, um... I don't have that. In this ship. It's quite nice, it's quite nice. And here we are, we actually see Pascal having a bath for once. I may make that the thumbnail. Yeah, it just, just seems funny as a thumbnail. I don't know. But at least the game then explains also what the, um, post credit scene was in the original ending of the game, because that's very, very vague. It's like, there's, you can sort of figure it out, but... It's still very, very vague here. It's fully explained. This ending just feels much more fleshed out. The story is resolved. It's at the right point. All this type of stuff. It's like... There was a lot of questions left over from the original ending. It's like, there's loads of stuff not answered. Like, what about this? What about that? And like, I feel here is satisfactory ending. It's just like, we're good. <laughs> Those two there, I can't believe it. Yeah, we're at a, we're at a fantastic point. It's like, yep, okay. Who knows what the future holds? It's like, if everything works out, it'll be a good one. And we have the post credits showing, like, yeah, it's probably going to be a good one. Anyway, so yeah, I enjoyed my time once again with Tales of Graces. F, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this journey once again. And, um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see you in whatever comes up next. I don't know what we're go going out tomorrow. Guess we'll find out tomorrow. So, ta ta for now, and thank you very much for watching. I promise, I'll watch over this world forever. <laughs> Once there was a young boy who discovered a lost seed. He planted it in his yard and he took care of it every day. 
Over time, the lost seed grew up and blossomed into a beautiful flower. What do you think happened to the seed after that? It turned into a bright, shining star that watched over everyone. This was its way of thanking the boy who had been so very kind to it. Which star was it? Well, it's the one we all know best. Our favorite star of all. <laughs>